Hi guys, today I thought I'd show you um, a cane that I made it was just something that I sat down and played around with the clay and quite honestly hope for the best. I don't have usually a vision in my head or, or an image in my head of how it's going to turn out because I can't think that far ahead where canes are concerned but um, I'm starting to get an idea of how they work so I thought I'd show you this one, it came out pretty nice. So I've used three quarters of a block of a small block of Primo translucent and just rolled it into a log. I've also rolled out some Peacock Pearl Blue, again Primo, and this is rolled onto a number three. I've rolled out a strip of white, which is rolled onto a number four. Another strip of white rolled out onto a number three. And I've also rolled out some logs. I've got the, uh, the Primo Peacock Blue again, some black. Um, Primo bright green pearl and another little sausage of translucent. This won't all get used up but I just like to get my logs ready so I know they're there and ready to go. Now you don't have to use these colours. I do suggest that you start with translucent because this is really more of a translucent cane but as far as the colours are concerned you can use whichever colours you want. I just want to quickly show you the one that I did before and it's um, this one and obviously I use purple in this one and there's some gold in there as well so that's the colours I used before but I'm using these colours today. So first thing first I'm going to take my strip of blue and I'm just going to roll this. I'm just going to wrap this translucent cane in there. give it a little rock so it leaves a line then you've got a line there to show you where to cut and join it up the other side like so okay I never worry about the ends too much at this point because they're always going to get trimmed off as we progress through the process so there's that now I'm going to take my strip of white this one is rolled onto a number four and same thing just going to pop that on there just straighten that edge off a little bit and again just roll it up give it a rock so it leaves a little line that you can cut and again join it up. Alright, so just going to give this a little squeeze just to make sure it's on there and then I'm going to use the rest of this blue clay and I'm hoping I've got enough which I don't think I do. So I'm just going to go back and roll out a little bit of more of that and I'll be back. Okay, so I rolled out um, this piece of clay um, this this leftover blue but I did roll it onto a number four just to stretch it out a little bit um, it doesn't have to be on a three all right so I'm just going to place that on there again and as you can probably tell there's a lot of wrapping in this one um, because that's what I do I wrap and I roll <laughs> okay I am going to get rid of some of this because that's hanging over way too much and again I'm not too worried about the ends at this point but I am just going to give it a little bit of a squeeze just to get it going and a little bit of a roll just to stretch it out a bit and I think I will now trim those edges so we can see what we're doing that's one side and another. I'm just going to reshape it back into a round shape. So you've basically got a bullseye cane wrapped in blue, white and then blue and it's the blues on number three, the whites on a number four and then the, the second lot of blue is on, on a number four. Alright, and then the last wrap with this white, 
which is rolled onto a number three because I wanted this layer to be a little bit thicker. I'm just going to take the ends off of this. Oops. Just tidy the edges up a bit and again wrap it up. Give it a little rock. Trim off the edge and I said the last wrap was the final wrap but it wasn't. I lied. This is the last wrap. So once you've got all your um, pieces wrapped around I'm just going to try and get it nice and rounded off now but it's not going to stay round all right so you've got a big plug of clay here now the next thing I want to do is let's go with this where this join was and just start to pinch up now I'm not making it into a triangle I want to keep the bottom part of it rounded so it's just the top part that I'm pointing, pinching so it goes into a nice point at the top. And I do want to stretch it out quite a bit and you'll see why in a second. Excuse all these marks on the clay but that's from this, my dry skin on my thumb. I'm not worried about it because it's all going to get rolled out but that's all that is. It's leaving a mark from my skin, my dry skin. Alright, so I'm just going to keep on pinching and kind of stretching this out a little bit. So it is going to get quite thin, but I'm always mindful of keeping this, this part rounded because I don't want it in a triangle. So I'm just going to pinch a little bit more and then I'm going to take my peacock blue log and I'm going to roll it out a little bit thinner. Like I say, I just um, pre-rolled these. I didn't roll them to the thickness that I wanted. But it's always good to have these things prepared. So it kind of helps you remember what the next step is as well instead of like doing one bit and then going and rolling something out and these are ready to go. So I'm just going to continue to roll this into a thinner sausage. And I'm not being over precise, you know, it's going to be roughly the same thickness, but um, I'm not going to panic if it isn't exact. I'm just going to take it down, take it down, and I think that might be good. I'm just going to take the edges off. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to pop it here so it's lying just underneath where this bit has been stretched up and then I'm just going to bring it and fold it over like so and I'm just going to kind of bring this white as far down as I can bring it to cover this whole piece of blue just get rid of this bit here. Again, I'm keeping in mind that I want this bottom bit to stay rounder. So I'm just going to keep pressing this white down until it touches the white clay underneath. So that blue sausage is completely covered. Alright, so it looks something like this. So you've got like a swirl in it almost. And then what you need to do is turn it over the other way and do the same thing. Find roughly the same spot, so center. And again, just start to pinch up the top part of the cane into a nice point.
So this cane is quite easy, but there's quite a bit of manipulation going on with it. I wouldn't say it was a complicated cane, but there is some faffing around with it to get it, you know, to go how you want it to go. Alright, so it, yeah, it looks a bit like a dog's dinner at the moment, but don't worry. It all gets smoothed out. Like I say, I'm not overly precise with my canes, to be honest. Alright, so when you finish pinching this part, you're going to place the strip, but you're going to do it on the other side, so it's the opposite side to the one that you did the first one. I'm just going to roll this out a little bit thinner. It seems a little thick. Not by much, just a fraction. And again, same thing, I'm just going to place that here. Get rid of the excess and then same thing as before. Bring that down until that blue is covered with white. Okay, that's really all there is to it on that section anyway. All right, so you've got what's you got something that looks something like this. This one's gone a bit. Oop. So I'm just going to try and shape it a little bit. I mean, I'm not too overly concerned because at the end of the day, this is all going to get rolled up into a a cane, but it has lost its shape a little bit. So I'm just going to try and reshape it a little bit. Alright, so you end up with something like this, and it does kind of look a little flat on the sides. That's that's fine, that's what you need. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is take my black um, sausage and roll this one out thinner as well. Now, like I say, you don't have to use these colours, but I do like... A little bit of black in mine it kind of gives it a little bit of um, an extra pop but I'm not using a lot of black so it's not going to overtake the piece but the choice is yours guys you use whichever colors you fancy now I am going to roll this out a little bit thinner than the blue okay I'll just get rid of the ends and I'm going to take it and place it where that fold was on the white and put it there. Actually, that's still a little thick, I think. I'm just going to roll it some more. Okay, so I'm going to take it and place it where that fold was made with the white over the blue. And just place it there like so and then I'm going to turn the cane over and do the same thing on the other side and place it there like so okay so now you've got this so you've wrapped over the blue with the white and now you've put a strip of black on either side well a sausage of black on either side like so then I'm going to get my green and do exactly the same thing just roll it out thinner I hope you're following this, guys. I'm always a little reluctant to do canes in case I screw up because um, obviously I practiced this one first, but I don't always remember the exact steps that I took. Um, so far, so good. Okay, so roll the green out. Oops take off the ends and this time I'm gonna line let me think now what how did I do this yeah I'm just gonna stack that on top of the black sausage like so and the same on this side 
stack that on top of the black sausage like so so now you're left with this so you can see that the colors are going in opposite directions green here black here green here black here almost at a diagonal if that makes sense and that one still looks a bit odd it looks a bit square oh well it will all work out in the wash okay and then the last um, step for this and we've used the clay that we need to use there's still some left so it's not going to go to waste okay and I'll, I'll get all mixed back up into their own color so the last thing then just roll this last sausage out of the translucent And we're going to do that as the last stack on top of the green so it's actually on top of this blue point that we started with okay if that makes sense I think I might just roll it out a bit thinner because I think I'm running low I should have rolled out a little bit more maybe okay so you are stacking that on this ridge so to speak and that's the last um, sausage that you'll need cut that away and then the same thing on this side again you just put in that last piece on that ridge above the green all right so this is what you're left with now the fun part guys but not really because this is the bit i don't like this needs to be reduced down a little bit now, but I want to try and keep... <laughs> I say I want to try and keep this shape, but it's gone a bit skew with. I want to try and keep the shape as best I can, but it does need to be reduced a little bit, only a little bit at this point. Um, so I'm just going to kind of pull and squeeze and stretch. And again, I'm not too worried about the ends. And this doesn't need to be reduced a great deal at this point so I mean it's very slightly it's just more about getting those um, pieces compressed together at this point All right, so I've literally just taken out a very slight amount and I am going to get rid of these ugly ends now. Just, I'm just cutting the ends off so it's neater and this is what you've, you're left with. Okay. Now I want to take this and just going to make sure it's pretty level. I want to take this and cut it in half. Make sure I get it as in half as I can. I am really bad at cutting through equally. So now you've got two pieces. Now you could place them this way so the black goes on the black here. Or you could turn it over while well, the black still goes on the black but it's you know what I mean <laughs> going in the same direction I meant this is going in the opposite direction so I'm just going to put them in the opposite direction and squeeze them together like this so it joins up and try and get it to match on both sides like so so now you've got something that looks like this so I flipped over the pieces so they're going in opposite directions rather than facing the same way you could do it the other way if you wanted but you would get a different slightly different look I guess all right so just get those two pieces together and this is where all the manipulation comes into play now 
but I'm trying to get them as symmetrical as possible on either end. Okay, so you've got the two black bits joined up there and the two translucent bits joined there. I really hope you're getting this, guys. I don't feel that competent in explaining canes, but I'm doing the best I can. All right, so when you've got that nicely stuck together, we need to start reducing it some more. So again, it's just a, a question of squeezing and stretching. I like to do this periodically to keep the ends nice and flat so not so much of it bulges out. So I'm just going to reduce this, but I'm going to go off camera to do it because you can see what I'm doing and I don't need to... Um, reduce the whole thing on camera but I'm not reducing it by that much anyway I'm going to go off camera and finish reducing this a little bit more and I'll be back okay so I've reduced it some more and it's it's looking like this now it has lost its shape a little bit in there but I, I don't really care to be honest I tried to keep it more you know like this but it's not happening so I'm not going to panic it will still turn out great so it kind of looks a little squarish um, but yeah all right so once you've done that you've reduced it again and now we're going to cut in half one more time and we're going to restack like so or you could go the other way if you wanted to let me think which way do I want to go hmm that way all that way. I think this is going to turn out a little bit different than my other one, even though I did the same steps. I think it's the way I rolled it. Didn't quite keep it in that same shape, but hey ho. I think I'm going to go with it like this, but you could um, join it up the other way if you wanted to. And try and get it as symmetrical as possible. Alright, so when you've cut it in half and restacked, now we just need to make sure it's together. But I'm going to take one side of it and we're going to start making it into um, more of a triangle now. So I think I'm going to go with this, where this little black bit is, as the point. But you could do it this way if you wanted. So again, it's just a question of manipulating it and getting it into a triangular shape and then reducing it. And this is the bit I don't like doing. It makes my fingers hurt and it takes quite a long time but I'll just get it into the point, get it into the triangle and show you. And then I'll just continue to reduce the rest of it off camera. So you can see I'm kind of pulling and squeezing as I go. And I'm just gonna keep rotating the cane until you're left with a triangular shape like so all right guys um, I'm gonna go off camera and reduce it and I'm gonna reduce it to six inches and I'll be back I stretched this out to six inches and I've um, cut my little marks in so we're gonna cut this the rest of the way into six hopefully equal pieces like so and then 
there we go we've got our um, pattern going on now so see not equal as usual oh my goodness me I'm so bad at cutting I really am I'm just going to take this off a little bit so it's a little bit more equal okay that's better so I'm just going to line these up like so make sure they're matching on both sides it's looking pretty nice it actually does look exactly the same as my other one I didn't think it would well almost identical anyway and again that one's a little wait just reshape this one a little bit Okay, so I'm just going to take off one half like that and place this little black sausage in the centre and then push it back together and again it's a little bit of manipulation needed try and get them all lined up as best as you can like this I'll just double check the other side before I go any further uh, trying to get it to stick together it's been a bit resistant on me okay and there we go guys that's the cane I'm really liking these colours as well. Like I said, I did I did it like this last time. In this, this has obviously been reduced, but with purple and gold. And you saw me do this with blue and green. Now, once again, this needs reducing. Um, I do a little bit on camera, but I'll do the rest of it off camera, and then we'll think about making a pendant or two with it. So I'm just gonna start to gently squeeze all the way around like this and I'm keeping my finger and thumb like this on either side of the cane it just helps to stop it from bulging out so much I found and then um, just gently pressing on the edges like so And I'm just going to keep doing that until it's down to roughly this size. So quite a bit of reducing to go. But the clay is quite soft now, so it shouldn't take too long. I'll just quickly do a little bit more on camera so you can see. I'm just pressing and turning, pressing and turning, and kind of pulling at the edges a little bit as I go. Just to try and keep it all together and reducing at the same rate. Okay, but I always start in the middle as you can see and you can see it's got like a little bit of a waist going on and then bring it out to the edges. Okay, so I'm going to go and reduce this some more and then I'll be back and um, I'll make a pendant or two from it. Alright guys, Oops. I've reduced this as much as I want to reduce it at this point and there it is, it's got a little bit smudged when I used the blade to cut through but ignore that bit and that's what it looks like okay so what you could do is reduce it down even more or keep it as big or small as you want and then just take slices and apply it to a backing sheet and that's kind of what I'm going to do but I thought I'd do something a little bit different so I'm just going to take my cane and I'm going to cut a fairly thick piece like so all right, and I'm just going to push it down onto my tile. Let me just bring you down a little bit so you can see better. I'm just going to push it down onto my tile and then give it a roll just to spread it out a little bit. Not too much, just 
like so. And then what I'm going to do, and that's if I can find my flexible blade, instead of just using the whole cane to add on to my backing sheet, and I've got some black rolled out here, I'm going to take really little thin slices. So it's just a more fragmented look. And then I'm just going to place that on my backing sheet like so. So I'm just going to keep on taking random thin slices from that one cut and just place it on my black clay and I'm leaving black gaps as well. As you know I don't like my pieces to look overly busy so that's what I'm going to do. Look how pretty. So this is a more of a fragmented look using a cane slice. It's almost like Makume Gane, isn't it? I'm just going to put that there. And let me think, maybe just one more little slice of something. I'm just going to put that. Hmm. Let me just get this out of the way. So I've still got a little bit that I can play with. I don't know, it just came to me. I thought it was kind of a cool idea. Like I say, you don't have to do this, but this is um, what I want to do today. So I'm just going to place that. Where do I want to place that? I'm going to place that here. All right, so I've just got a few little slices laid on my black backing, which is rolled out onto a number one. And just for reference, my pasta machine is an Atlas 150 zero being the thickest setting and I'm just going to give this a good burnish and make sure those slices of cane are flush to the black clay I know I do similar kind of things when it comes to this when it comes to canes but it's just what I like and uh, you can use you can utilize your cane in any which way you want to but I thought I'd show you this because I kind of like the idea and I did make one and it does look pretty nice so I'm just going to keep burnishing that until I can feel that it's nice and smooth the only thing I'm worried about of course is the card sticking too much to the backing uh, the clay sticking too much to the backing card so I'm just gonna make sure it doesn't do that ooh this has stuck somewhat so I've just got to gently peel it off I think it's this card that I'm using it's, it sticks a lot alright so I'm just going to give this a quick roll. I'm not going to burnish it anymore because uh, I don't want to destroy it. I just want to make sure it's nice and smooth. And flush. Actually, I'm going to give it another quick burnish, but not so vigorous. I'm not going to press down as hard. I just want to make sure it's nice and smooth. Okay, that's better. Got a little divot there. Okay, so that's what I'm doing with my first cane slice. And I'm just going to get a round cutter and cut this out. Let's see where I want it to go. I'm just going to lift it up. Yep, I think that looks good. And I'm just going to cut it out. And um, that's the first pendant. Okay, and I am going to dome this one. Just give it a quick smooth and hopefully it comes off easily. It's a little stuck. I think I need to get some different card. And I'm just going to place it on my domey bowl thing. You could use a, a, a bowl or whatever you wanted that gives it 
a dome. But you don't have to dome it at all, obviously. Come along, stick down. Alright, so I'm going to go and bake that one. When it finally sticks. Okay, so that's that one. Now you could put a hidden bale on the back of this if you wanted. I might actually do that, I don't know yet. We'll see. But I am going to go and bake it. Um, I'm going to give it a quick wipe with rubbing alcohol before I do that though. Just get a wet wipe. And this just removes any little blemishes or fingerprints or whatnot. Okay, so that's the first piece which I'll go and bake and I just love that fragmented look of the cane. It's just something a little different. So there's that one. Now the other thing, again, you know, you could just take little random little slices, reduce it, make them smaller, whatever. I'm going to leave it this size. And I'm going to do the same thing and cut off a fairly big chunk. And press it on my tile and roll it out. I'm not pressing too hard because I found that it can somewhat distort the pattern if you roll it too hard. So I'm just going gentle with it and just turning it as I go. And I'm just going to roll it big enough to accommodate one of my round cutters. Like so. I think that might be enough. Now, of course, you could add a back into this if you wanted to make it thicker, which I probably will. But just for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to show you. I'm just going to cut down like that. And that's the pendant itself. Just one big rolled out cane slice okay like I say you could put a backing on it it's not that thin and particularly if you resin it that will thicken it out but like I say for the purpose of the video I'm just going to show it to you like this all right guys so that's another way of utilizing your cane so I've got this fragmented look and then just one whole slice of cane to make the pendant itself all right guys so I'm going to go and bake these um, I'll probably resin this one and sand and buff this one and I'm probably going to add a hidden bale to the back of this so once I've done all that I'll be back to show you all right so here are the finished pieces sanded and buffed this one and I just put a hidden bale on the back and just push this um, wire necklace through which you can get from Amazon so that's the fragmented look, kind of cool. And then this is the one that I um, just used one cane slice and kind of spread it out a little bit. And um, I did put a backing on, I put a white backing on it because it was quite thin. Added a pinch bale and again a wire choker style necklace. Um, and I resined it as well. So they're the pieces from today. This is another one that I did using the, the purple colours. Now I did notice the difference between the two canes after all and I think what happened was, and it doesn't matter, it really doesn't matter, I used the exact same steps in both of these canes but I think the difference is, because this one's got more of an obvious centre to it, I think when I um, reduced it and made the triangle it depends on which way you make the center points if that makes sense so I obviously um, put the points a different way to get this center bit so you just need to play around with it but I did exactly the same steps other than that um, on both these canes <clears throat> so that's why they look a little bit different so it all depends where you make your center point when you put in them putting the pieces together if if that makes sense but there you go guys there's um, 
the cane that I did today and there's one that I did using different colours and they do look a little bit different for the reasons I've already given but there you go guys that's all for today just a quick close-up of that one that's the purple fragmented one I really like that one sanded and buffed and the blue one so there the that's the difference between the two and it isn't a great difference so that's my little cane tutorial for you and a few pieces to show you and there are the canes. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you later. Bye.